Today we're going to take a look at using some of the sheet metal functions in Fusion 360 to create a control box for our syringes. So when you're running your syringes to run your excavator arm, rather than just pulling and pushing and pulling on the syringe itself, it's sometimes nice to have them mounted so that you've got a little bit of leverage and just a little bit finer control and it certainly makes things look a little bit nicer when you're doing this bit of ergonomic touch actually so once again i like to uh, mention that before beginning any design i do sit down with a uh, pencil and paper and i encourage you to do the same and just sort of rough some ideas out in your head so that you've got an idea of where you want to go with your drawing and uh, here we're going to make uh, something fairly simple out of sheet metal and uh, we'll talk a bit more about some of the design uh, stuff as we go through and do that before we do, though, um, I happen to have done this already, and Fusion 360 has given me a lovely render drawing right here, and you can see the uh, clamp that we built the other day, um, clamped right around the syringe down here at the bottom, the cap that we built the other day mounted nicely onto our uh, plunger, and the syringe mounted in between right here and by moving this uh, upper arm up and down we're going to have a nice little uh, lever arm to control the position of our excavator arms we'll pop a couple of screws in right here and right here actually i've got screws mounted on the other side i'll show them to you in a moment and uh yeah, it's just nice when it renders it like that. It's so pretty. To get there, all I did was uh, on this menu, I just came down to render. And then when you're in the render, you can hit on the in canvas render option. There's other fancy render options that you can do to get nice looking uh, pictures of your uh, project. But uh, yeah, with a bit of uh, material choice on there, it uh, comes out looking not too bad. Alrighty. Uh, let's go into our design here. Goodbye, pretty picture. Now we've got this. And uh, as I was saying, you can see I started putting some screws in here earlier on. And uh, this is actually an operational mechanism. I've grounded the base right here so that we can move that up and down. And if you got your syringe assembled properly yesterday, we've got limits on movement on what that plunger can do so that you can see that as the operator uh, moves this up and down, then they're going to have finer control uh, over top of the syringe than if they were just uh, doing it by pulling on the plunger itself. I'd probably recommend that somebody come along on this surface right here, punch a couple holes through this way and maybe put a wooden lever or something on there. Uh, there's other things that you could do. You could put various stops or mechanisms in here so that if you wanted to go to a certain position, you could have it lock in a certain place or some kind of marker so you don't really have to look at the arm so much as just look at how that goes right in there. So that's where we're heading. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by making this piece of sheet metal right on the bottom. And then we're going to make this one on the top. We're going to put them together. And then we're going to take our clamp and our cap and our syringe, and we're going to put it in there. And it's all going to animate up fairly nicely for us. OK, so uh, I'm just going to save that file. So I've got my reference right there. And I'm going to close that window because I'm going to start all over from scratch and hope I remember what the heck I did to get to that position. Okay, um, so we've got a new drawing here, and uh, I am going to save this as excavator, uh, well, we'll just call it uh, excavator control box 2. I've already made version 1, so that's what you were looking at before. And here we go. Uh, we are getting ready to go. And now our f what we're going to do is we're going to build this using components. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new component. And a component is where we can put our models. And as you'll remember from building the syringe, we took the plunger and the body as two separate components. And the components could interact with each other. The bodies all have to stay fixed to each other. So within a component, you can have bodies underneath there. But they're all fixed together. And they're controlled at the component level. And we can control which component we're looking at and operating on and motivating. Um, that modifying by activating the component by clicking on these little buttons right up here. So if I want to activate all my components, I can click up here. But right now I'm just going to edit this one component and I'm just going to call this um, uh, box base. 
it's not really a box, but uh, we're going to use a box and pan break to make the part. So why not? Let's call it a box. And uh, let's go over to our sheet metal tools. So as you go along here, you can see that we've got sheet metal right up here, and it changes our window options slightly. We've got fewer of them, but we've got uh, maybe some uh, more options in here that are specific to sheet metal. Okay, and uh, the first thing we need to do is tell it a little bit about what sort of sheet metal we're going to be using. And we do that by coming into our sheet metal rules, and we take a look right here, and uh, I've got uh, a couple extras in here. You're going to come to aluminum and uh, click on the drop down arrow. It's got information about the aluminum that it knows about already. And if you've got experience as a sheet metal worker, uh, you'll know all about the K factors and how things bend and the, the bend conditions. And you'll be geeking right out over all of these uh, these options right in here because you can control them all. But what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, create a new rule. So click on the little plus box right there. And the new rule option is going to come up and we're going to call this aluminum one millimeter thick. Now one millimeter thick aluminum is very close to the 18 gauge uh, sheet aluminum that we have in our shop. If you went down to a 16 gauge, it goes up to about 1.3 millimeters. And if you go to a 20 gauge, you're at about 0.8 millimeters thick. But for what we're building right here, I think 18 gauge aluminum and that one millimeter thickness should be pretty good. So we're gonna save that right in there. And oh, I better edit that because I forgot to tell it it was one millimeter thick. Spent all my time talking about, um, there we go. So we've got aluminum one millimeter thick and we're going to use that rule when we create our part. We can close that window now that the rule is made. And what we're gonna do uh, to start out here is we're going to create a sketch. And again, pick a surface to create the sketch on. And we're just gonna start with the bottom part of the uh, of the box and just draw a two point rectangle and don't worry about what size it is because we're going to come down right here and we're going to tell it that we want it to be 50 millimeters and uh, about 200 millimeters long and we will finish that sketch and there we go now we have a flat piece. Now normally we'd come along and when we've done our other models we'd take that and we'd extrude it. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to use a sheet metal tool and we are going to create a flange or a surface on here. So we use sheet metal to create and we click on right there and it says what sheet metal rule do I want to use? Well uh, we just uh, set this one up down here. It's uh, very conveniently just come right off the screen. That's a formatting thing that uh, doesn't seem to be easy to fix. Anyways, thankfully we know it was the one on the bottom. And uh, so we'll click, double click on that one. We've got that one selected. And uh, so there we go. It's going to create a new body for us. And there we go. We zoom in right here. That is one millimeter thick. If you need to know for sure, you can always inspect it and measure the distance from the top to the bottom, but we're happy about that. Well, now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create a flange on here. And the flange is their generic uh, word for a bend in here. And we're gonna bend that side up and we're gonna bend that side up. And uh, you can see that there's uh, different ways that you can do your bend and you can uh, do your bend uh, you can measure your bend on the inside, on the outside, um, so different ways to dimension that bend. We're just going to do it on the inside, so the two flanges that come up are going to be 50 millimeters on the outside diameter. So uh, we've got the two sides selected, and we just need to tell it how high we want it to come up, and somewhere around 40 millimeters should do the trick for us. Okay, and... So what's really nice about this is when you go ahead and you create that bend, you'll see that down here, it actually does a bend just like you get out of a piece of sheet metal. A lot of times when people will model that, they'll come up with a straight 90 degree corner 
and they'll forget that there's issues like the thickness of that sheet metal that are going to come into play because if you just went ahead and sketched that out with a thin line you'd forget that if it's 50 millimeters from that side to that side that the inside dimension well we've got one millimeter thick metal so this is going to be uh, lose one millimeter here and one millimeter here the dimension on the inside is going to be 48. Okay so we've got that shape put together right there. It's uh, a bit rude when you're working in sheet metal to leave uh, these uh, corners uh, sharp and square. We've got different things we can do. We can chamfer them. Uh, we can radius them. Uh, there's options in here. You can put a chamfer. You can put a fillet on there. And we're going to put a fillet on it because it also helps us align where we want some of our parts to go. So on this corner right in here and this corner right in here, they're fussy little connections. And on this corner right here. And you could do these one after the other if you wanted to, but we're going to pick those four edges and we are going to put, uh, oh, let's say, what happens if we put a 10 millimeter radius onto them? That looks reasonably nice. Okay, and it just gets rid of those sharp edges. It reminds us that when you're working with sheet metal, be kind to the person who's going to be using the uh, re resulting component. Okay, there we go. Now we've got a piece of uh, sheet metal folded up and it's coming together here. It's looking pretty good. And uh, we can now come back to our solid modeling abilities, get out of the uh, sheet metal tool here. There's other things that we can do with that later on. And uh, let's put a couple of holes in here because we're going to want to uh, run a hole right through here for mounting the other uh, part of the box and a hole right down here for mounting our uh, syringe. So uh, those will both be uh, number six holes. So we'll create a hole right here and on that surface. And so the whole function is up there. Just pick the surface right there. And then you can drag that down and you can see there's a dot right there at the center of that radius that we just made. Now, if you want to position the hole somewhere else, you can. Uh, you can see over here that there's two different references that you can select. But for what we're doing right here, that's going to be a nice uh, looking uh, place to put it. Now, uh, yours is probably telling you that it wants to go through a distance. Uh, what we're going to do is tell it that we want to go to... So we said we're going to start on that surface and you got to kind of flip it around here and say that you want to go to that surface. And now you can see the hole comes right through there and it automatically figures out that's going to be 50 millimeters in there. Now it wants to know what type of hole we're going to make. And if you're wanting to run a uh, number six screw through there, uh, we've got different types of holes. We're just going to make a simple hole right through there. Um, and what we're actually going to go through, though, is a clearance hole, because if we do a simple hole, it just asks for diameter. But if you tell it you want a clearance hole, then you can come down here and you can pick ANSI Unified Screw Threads. And uh, then we can come down here and it'll ask you, well, what type of screw do you want? Um, you know, it doesn't really matter much. Flathead machine screw. And then a number six machine screw and uh, normal close so it'll tell you yeah uh, how, how precise that you're going to be and just go ahead and click OK and now we've got a hole punched through right there and we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to punch a hole create a hole right down at this end on that face and it remembers some of those parameters just drag that around and it'll snap onto that point right there and check to make sure that it comes through to the other side and check your parameters to make sure it did remember that, okay, we don't want the extent to be distance. We want it to be two. And it's important that you set that up because later on, if you change your dimensions for some reason, then uh, it will always remember that it goes to that surface. and that. Uh, so you can make that longer or further over there. Um, it should remember on here that we want a clearance hole and we want uh, unif ANSI Unified, number six, screw, normal fit, 
and the the fit is just do you want it loose do you want it sloppy do you want it super tight because obviously you need to leave a little bit of uh, dimensional tolerance on there and uh, there we go so that is set up right in there and that part right there is going to be our first component and it's going to form the base of our uh, of our box so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create the top of the box and that's going to fit inside right there so we're going to come up here and we're going to activate the component and then we say new component right here because if we still had box base activated and I said new component under there then that component would belong to box base and it would be underneath there in the hierarchy I want these components to all be equal so that we can put them together and uh, manipulate them together and we'll call this box top okay and now you can see that the box base is kind of grayed out right here because we're working on the box top and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch and again we'll pick the surface right down there and it really doesn't matter where we start because uh, we're going to create a box same sort of thing that we're doing as last time and let's dimension that bot base of the box now remember that we made this 50 millimeters wide so we're going to make this 48. now we could uh, take a measurement off of there uh, we could use parameters and we could link them together but i don't foresee us making a lot of changes on here so our outside dimensions are 48 and we'll set this to 200 as well okay there we go we can finish that sketch and now let's take a look at it in here we're going to turn this into a piece of sheet metal and so we're going to come down to our sheet metal tools we're going to go flange tell it that surface is going to be a flange and you can see now it shortened our list we can go to our library but it says you're already using this one in the uh, this design do you want to keep using that one millimeter thick aluminum and yes indeed we do and we're just going to repeat our steps of creating a flange i'm in here pick that side and pick that side and this one we only need to come up about 30 millimeters okay there we go and we'll fill it these corners you might have to zoom in to get that edge exactly Like I say, if you're making this in the shop, maybe you don't round the corners off entirely and you just champ for them, but you don't want to leave sharp corners on your sheet metal stuff. Um, and let's just put a 10 millimeter radius around right there and we'll say, okay. Alrighty, now we're gonna punch a hole right through here just like we did last time. So we come back to our solid tools up here and we can come in here and we can create a hole and that hole is going to come in right there we're going to drag it down and pop that right onto that pivot point there so our nice rounded edges uh, go together and uh, again it's making it a distance we tell it we want to go through to the other side okay and then we want it to be a clearance hole um, we don't worry about the drill point that's only if it's a blind hole and uh, number six screw is all looking good right there we click ok and we have a hole and now this hole we don't want to be out at the end because that's where the syringe is going to mount to so we're going to come in here and we're going to say hole and we're going to put it somewhere on this surface right in here and this is where I was saying, you know, we can pick up some references. And uh, so we can say reference one, we want to measure from that side. And let's make that 10 millimeters down. It's giving me a warm. Let's uh, take a look in here. What happened to that hole? Now, as I go and create all these parts, they show up in the timeline down here. I hit. Uh, enter just a little bit too soon and uh, it's 10 millimeters down right here I thought I saw an error on there what it may have wanted is it may have also wanted me to select 
a different side right here to take a dimension off of. And let's set that dimension to 70. We can come back and change that later on if we need to. Oh, that wasn't a warning. It was just locking it in place. I got a little excited when I saw yellow on there. I've ran into a few errors on uh, some of my earlier drawings today. Okay, let's go ahead and take that. And now we've got these two objects uh, sitting right in here. And we're going to put them together in a minute. But just before we do, let's save that. Because if you save it, it's going to give it a version number. And you can always come over here and you can take your little drop down there and take it back to a version that was actually working. Okay, to put those two together, we are going to activate uh, both of the components right here so we can see both of these uh, together. And what we're going to do right now is we are going to assemble it. We're going to take a joint. Okay, and what we want is we want the center of that hole right there. You can see we've got the cross mark on there. I should come in a little bit closer so that you can see the different things. There we go. The center of that hole right there. So we know that we've got that part picked is going to come over here and it's going to flip onto here and it's already guessing where it wants me to put it onto the center of that hole right there. Well that's one way it could have gone together I guess. Let's flip that part over and now we've got that in there exactly and perfectly aligned with this piece right here and when we lift it up and down that part's not going to run into any problems. So I'm liking that joint alignment right there. And let's just check the types of motion that we have. So if yours didn't rotate like that, that's probably because you've got it hooked up as a rigid joint. We want it to be a revolute joint. And uh, yes, it doesn't know any better that it can't rotate through itself, but we'll take care of that a little bit later on. There are a number of other joints that you could put in there. A slider joint would allow it to slide back and forth. A cylindrical joint would allow it to slide and rotate. Um, pin slot joint would uh, be able to slide back and forth that way. But uh, we are just plain old revolute joint. So it can spin, but not much else. We're going to say OK right there. So there we go. We've got that pinned together right there. Now we want to be able to see that move a little bit. So in order to move things around, you need to have one of your objects grounded. So we're going to take the box base right here. And uh, we're just going to activate the box base and right click on it. And we're going to say ground so that you see right in there a little pin comes up. And that says that box base is grounded or pinned in place. It can't move. Come back here, turn all of our components on, and now I should be able to come in here and pick that up. And I can lift that part up, and uh, you should now be able to drag this up and down and see your range of movement on here. Now, if we were uh, really concerned about that rotating too far in either direction, we'd be able to come back and we'd be able to put a range of motions on it uh, by coming along and taking a look at our joint. There's a revolution joint, and you could edit the joint limits right there so we can control how far that's going to move, but we'll let our syringe take care of that for us. Okay, now this is where it's good uh, to have all of your projects sitting together in about the same place, because last day uh, we made a 30 millimeter diameter syringe, and here is my 30 millimeter, uh, sorry, my not my 30 millimeter diameter syringe, my 30 milliliter syringe. And here is my 30 milliliter syringe. This is the big syringe. And if I click on that and I drag it and just click somewhere on the screen, my syringe is going to come right into here. I'm just going to move that over so it's a little bit out of the way because um, we've got a few other operations to do on that just yet. And I'm just going to leave that sitting right there. I'm happy with it. Just click OK. All right, now we've got our syringe in here uh, all, along with us. Nice looking syringe. And now what we need to do is we need to put our mounting parts that we've designed for it together. And so we have a uh, syringe cap. And we made a custom syringe cap for the 30 milliliter syringe. So I bring that in right here. 
And now you'll see these are showing up as components right in here. And there's a little chain logo in here saying that they are linked to that original one. So if I go back to that original file and I edit it later on, then I'm going to change that one. And if I edit this one in here, then I'm going to change that one. So just so you know, that little uh, link right there is important. We are going to make, bring a part in and we are going to break that link a little bit later on so that the part will only exist within this drawing. But this one is going to remain linked. All right, I'm just going to move this out a little bit here so it's easy to get a close view of that. I am going to say OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that onto that surface right up there. So if we come in here and we go assemble, uh, we can capture that position. We don't need things to move around. Come in here, click on that surface and get the very middle right there. So you've got to pay attention to what you've got selected, okay? Because you could be out here and you could have that surface or that surface or that surface right there. We don't want any of them. We want that surface right in the middle because that exact point right there if we take that and come up to this surface right here, you can see it'll figure out I probably want to go to that point right there. And that top comes up there and it connects and it's spinning around right on there. Now, if we needed fine adjust, we can drag it relative to that point. But if we made everything properly when we designed all these parts, that should be fitting on there absolutely perfectly. Uh, OK, so now we just want to take a look at our range of motion. And I'm just going to latch that on there uh, rigidly. So that's hooked on. It doesn't move on there. We've got that bolted together in. Um, and that's, that's looking pretty good. OK, so now we've got a collar or a clamp that's going to come around and hold this end of the syringe in right there. And so let's bring in our syringe collar. A moment to process and there is our syringe call oh you know what I forgot to click OK on that pardon me always remember to click OK before you go on to do the next command I just need to redo that joint capture the position right there do right there set the motion rigid and okay now that'll stay right there okay now this one right here um, you may have the actual actual right diameter this was still one of my prototype drawings so I need to come in here and I need to edit this one up a little bit so that it fits right around here and uh, I, I know that when I take a look right here I can go inspect I can take a look at the diameter right there and that's 23.5. When I made this one, it had a diameter of 24 on the inside. So I need to come into my sketch and just change that diameter down a little bit. You may or may not need to do that. So I'm just going to click close right now. And if I do need to make any changes to this design, because I don't want those changes to go back and affect this, um, because I'll be using this in other parts of the design as well, I'm going to come on here and I am going to uh, activate this component and I want to break that link and so if I right click on there uh, where are we here about halfway down the list we've got break link and poof that link is gone right now this part now only exists within this drawing now it gave me a little warning here it said that uh, the fillet was somehow related to information in that other drawing this is one of the neat things about the timeline in here is that uh, I can uh, come back in here let me uh, activate that component and for some reason that fillet to if I come back in to Oh, I click on the little plus right here. This gives me the entire timeline for making that part. And all I need to do is double click on that. You may not have to do this. So don't feel you're missing out if you don't have to do that. And I click OK and the yellow goes away. I think it just needed to regenerate uh, that last fillet in here for me. If you don't have to do that, this you don't maybe don't have to change the inside diameter. But uh, if you do, you can come in here and you can look at the sketches. Your first sketch was the one that defined that inside diameter. And on my drawing, this is the inside diameter for that circle right there. I just need to take that down to 23.5. So that will clamp nicely 
onto my circle. Now, while I'm doing that, and I'm in here, and you may need to do this for your design, uh, you'll recall we made this 50 millimeters from the outside there to the outside right there. I guess we could have designed our box to fit that perfectly, but we can come in here and we can change this as well. Um, instead of that being uh, 24, five, it's gonna be one millimeter in. We're gonna drop that down to 24. So when we come to print that part, it's going to be an absolutely perfect fit for our absolutely perfect box. Cause of course we're gonna manufacture everything absolutely perfectly. Uh, so let's finish sketch right there. And now you'll see that that part has been changed. There we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate all my components again, and I am going to create a joint, and I'm going to come in here, and I am going to click on the inside diameter, and you can see it, uh, the, the point that it's going to connect to can either be on the top right there or on the bottom, but so long as you've got one that's on the center, that's okay. And then we're going to come along and right down here, we're going to want to make sure that we get uh, that we get this object right here. We don't want it uh, going to the plunger. We want it coming to the syringe. And there you go. You can see we've got a cylindrically centered point on the on the syringe. You could also pick the outside edge. This is probably a better one to go to, okay? Because that's what our diameters are set up to match. And if I click that, that comes in right there. Now that's a little too low. There's really nothing for it to clamp to. And that's where these arrows come along. You can just drag that up until you're clamped on at a convenient point. And probably the most convenient point is somewhere right near the bottom, right in there. And then uh, we can take a look. Our motion is rigid, which is exactly what we want. We want that clamped on there tight. Okay. Now that's on there. Um, why did we lose our syringe cap again? Where did all my joints go? That syringe cap is just being uh, recalcitrant. One more time, we'll put that back up on the top where it belongs. Stay put this time. Okay. Now, uh, we should be able to come in here. We're going to open this up a little bit so that we've uh, got some ability to touch on things. So just pick that up, open it up right on there. And now we've got to mount our uh, syringe clamp, uh, our syringes and our clamp right into here. So I am going to take, uh, make a joint, capture that position. I come in right here and pick the center of that drill hole right there. Okay, and we're gonna come over here and I'd like that to mount to the inside surface right over there. That clamps in there. Now that's the only thing that moved but let's just, uh, oh, we need to give it some motion and I'm gonna make it revolute so that can spin right inside there. And you can see while it was doing that, animate that again, I checked to make sure that our, uh, our screw right there isn't gonna get caught either. Okay, and let's go okay. And now that moves over along with that. So since this is grounded right here, I should be able to take this and move it around and that all looks like it's working right. Well, you can probably guess what we're going to have to uh, clamp together next. And we're going to put a joint right on here. And we'll capture the current position. And take that point at the center of that hole. And we'll bring it along here. And we'll put it to the center of that hole. Notice that it could be trying to go to the outside. That's not going to make it right there. Okay, that's just a little off. That's not going to center nicely for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a, a cylindrical joint. And now that's free to move side to side. 
And if I if I make it too precise and I give it uh, uh, restrict it in too many degrees of freedom, then everything has to be absolutely perfect. But if I let it slide around a little bit in there, uh, then that's going to fit in there nicely. And you can see we've got a little bit of a gap right in there. We could come back in and we could modify that syringe cap if we want to make a custom fit one that's going to fit in there absolutely perfectly. And I might come back and do that in just a moment. But before we do that, let's see if that's in there properly by grabbing the top right here. And we can bring the syringe down and we can lift it all the way up. And now you can see that this gives us the full range of movement and it's really easy to visualize and make sure that we're going to have room for our syringe to move and do its thing and we're going to be able to see how much uh, that amount of motion it uh, takes up. Now this could be an actuator of course too. If we were applying hydraulic pressure to this the syringe would be doing the pushing we're pushing on the syringe right here. We're going to be squeezing water in and out of here. It's going to flow down a tube and it's going to make a different syringe do what we want to do and it could have completely different geometry. So when we're fully extended, that will be all the way up. Okay, and then as we push down on that, we'll be able to squeeze water out. We'll be able to extend the other syringe. So we'll be able to make three of these and have a control panel for our, um, for our excavator arm. Well, that's looking pretty good. The uh, last thing, like I said, I want to customize this so it fits to the inside just perfectly. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come down here. That's the syringe cap. And I am going to break the link right in there. OK, we'll capture the current position right in here. And you can see the syringe cap is no longer linked right in there. And I can come into my sketches. And in sketch one, Check that up so I can see what's going on in sketch one. Okay, this one, the outside uh, dimensions are set to 40. I'm just going to set that up. Uh, this should be set to 46. Finish that sketch. And now that part fits in there absolutely perfectly and beautifully. And uh, we have a very nice mechanism. Now, uh, if you want to render it up and get a nice looking shot of it, uh, we want to apply a few materials to it. So just as we did with our syringe, uh, you can come in here and for the, um, where are we right here? For the box base, you can right click on that and go physical material. And you can drag aluminum right up onto the box base and onto the top. There we go. We're done. We can close that box. And now if you want to get a nice fancy look at it, pull that out a little way so we can see up and in underneath. Rotate it into a position that you kind of like. And then come over here and click on render. Oh, you may have to play around with it a little bit. It changes the perspective when you look at the camera angle in render. Well, is that one showing that it's coming all the way through right there? Or is that just a bad rendering artifact? I think that's just a bad rendering artifact. Let's see what happens when we do our in canvas render. Click on the in canvas render button. And now as you can see, it figures it out and it starts to get shiny and uh, because it's doing a process of ray tracing and accounting for uh, everywhere that the light bounces around it does take a minute or two uh, for it to figure this all out the processor on your computer will be working fairly hard there is an option to set this up and have um, have it uh, all animated and uh, get an animation of how it all comes together but uh, if you're if you're this far along into the drawing process then you're probably doing just fine and i do think right down there that i might need to just take a close look at how that's in there 
Uh, this one's fitting in there very nicely. You can see that the reflective aluminum is being rendered up very nicely. And uh, anyways, if you uh, really want a nicely rendered drawing of the part that you've just designed, you can go ahead and create it that way. I'm going back to design because there's one or two more little things that we should do before we start high-fiving ourselves uh, too much right on here. This is bothering me. It's a nice joint right there, but why did that come over all the way? What did I do wrong? So that was our uh, syringe collar. You may or may not have this issue, but in sketch one on mine, where is that? Syringe collar right here. Whoop. There we go. Oh, that one's still showing 25 on that side. I need to take that down to 24. I didn't make that quite as parametric as I thought I did. Finish that sketch and come back here. Turn everything back on and uh, click the fit button. It all comes back together. And now I no longer have that uh, annoying artifact where that goes all the way through. So you can go in and you can change things and you can edit them up and you can play with them. Now, where did the screws come from? Because I did have a couple of nice screws right in here. So uh, we're going to bring some screws in. And to do that, we're going to go insert. And we're going to insert a McMaster car component. So if you're familiar with McMaster car, they're an online parts supplier. I have no idea of what sort of deal they arranged with uh, Autodesk to uh, get included in Fusion 360. But this takes you directly to the McMaster car catalog. And uh, if you... Um, haven't uh, read uh, Mc through McMaster Car's catalog. Their online catalog is great and saves a lot of paper, but their paper one is amazing too. Uh, let's go in and just take a look at some of the range of screws and bolts that they have. Now, as you take a look at the range of screws and bolts that you'll have, you'll notice that they are drastically, drastically short of Robertson head screws. And uh, I blame Henry Ford for that. Uh, that cheapskate bastard didn't uh, know a good deal when he saw it. So uh, we're going to go and we're going to go out with a, uh, oh, let's see, what sort of screw should we put in there? It's going to be a number six. You could get fancy and, you know, uh, you could do something like that. But basically in your shop, you can have a rounded head screw around somewhere. And again, no Robertson. They've got Phillips. They've got flat. They've got Torx. Uh, They've got hex drive. Okay, um, they've got all sorts of things. We're just going to go, uh, well, we want a number six screw, so I can come over on that side, tell it I want a 632, which is a national course, and that makes sure that there are 632s available in here. I'm going to want something that's, uh, I don't know, about a uh, quarter of an inch, uh, three sixteenths, maybe well, quarter inch is a pretty standard size that should uh, more than do what we need it to do. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go a little bit longer. And yeah, I know I'm working in Imperial here. Let's go to 3 eighths. That's probably going to be better. And uh, let's just pick a Phillips head rounded screw. And we want passivated and chrome plated screws. It's got stainless steel. We don't Okay, I'm gonna put stainless steel in. It's gonna be, uh, it's it's gonna be a Phillips head. I would I would use just a cheap uh, regular uh, Robertson because they're just better screws. But uh, let's click on that one and uh, look at that. You can buy a pack right there. But we're gonna click on the product detail and we're gonna get a virtual one. And if we come down to the bottom of that, there's our 2D drawing but come down to the bottom and it will give you a 3D step file. So it's got all sorts of different formats. You need to tell it you want the 3D step file and then just click save. And the program is actually smart enough to know that when you tell it you want to save that, it brings that little screw right in here. And uh, there you go. Uh, we've got a screw right there. Now it's going to go through that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this outer arrow here. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to 
then we're going to drag it right down here and let's see if I take a look at it from the right side right there I can bring that up right there and what do you bet that that snaps into position right on there and then I can rotate around And I can bring that in that's reasonably flush with the surface right there you can even see how far it fits into the hole so that's really cool and let's just say okay so we've got a screw sitting in right there um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, click on that screw gonna activate that screw and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna tell it I want to copy that screw and then I should be able to actually that what I'm looking for is the move copy command I may need to come up and activate everything activate the entire component come down here and move copy there we go sorry I could have just pressed M so there you go uh, right click on the object move copy And I am going to turn on the create copy button right here. And then I'm going to take that right over to here. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. And then I'm going to pop it right back in that way. And now I've got two screws holding that together in there. And There we go, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take that again, and I'm gonna say move copy. And I want the create copy option turned on. And we're gonna move that upwards. And we're gonna move that over. And I guess I should have taken both of them because they're both going to about the same place. And uh, let's look at it from the right side so we get this perfectly aligned. I'm going to grab that middle part and see if I can get it to snap directly to right there. Why is it not snapping to that point for me? That looks like it snapped into place for me gonna say uh, okay and then I'll do a, another move copy that one go in a little too far uh, maybe my placements a little bit off on that one but it's uh, it's okay uh, we'll take that one and we'll do a move copy and uh, we will create a copy and we will take that and move it over this way rotate it around here and drag that in oops too far that looks better let's see now are those in place or oh they're staying there okay so we're gonna have to actually do a joint on them and so just take a joint capture that position come along right here and if we find the center point of that surface right there we should be able to come along and put it with the center point of that circle right there and no we don't want a cylindrical we just want a rigid so that's stuck in there and then we're going to come up here and on this one we will Come along and create a joint and come from the center point right there to the center point of that hole and that one remembers that that was supposed to be rigid so that's stuffed in place right there now that's working a little bit nicer and if we wanted we could come along and we could put a couple in here and we could put a nut in there actually for down here at the bottom uh, you know what's going to work better in there is if we come along here and we go uh, insert a McMaster car component 
and let's see what they have. You can search for pop rivets and we'll see what uh, comes along right here. If we bring in a blind rivet, just a standard domed head blind uh, rivet, that looks uh, pretty standard and that's what we'd like it to look like and we're gonna go for uh, 3.2 millimeters diameter yeah that'll probably actually fit in there and uh, there we go 3.2 millimeters and uh, let's see head height shear strength tensile strength not worried about that hole size length uh, six millimeters is probably fine we're going through two millimeters come in here product detail scroll down to the bottom and save that file right there and it pops it in right about like so oh those guys we're gonna have to do a little edit on this if we really want to get this just absolutely perfect um, I'm just going to rotate this so that it's ready to go through the hole 90 degrees. Bring it in right here. Look at it orthographically so that I can just drag this up. Drag that position so it is right over top of there should probably do it with a joint but okay we got a pop rivet going in right there and now we just need to get rid of uh, that part of the pop rivet and to do that we should be able to come in here and activate a pop rivet and drop down here and it's got bodies in it Oh, those are the screws that we brought in. There's the pop rivet. And there are bodies within it. Body one. Oh, it's going to be more hassle than it's worth to get rid of that. I think we'll just call it a day right there. We could always put a screw in. We could get rid of that part, actually. But we know we're going to put a pop rivet or, you know, just a screw all the way across in there. And... Uh, Goodbye, pop rivet. I've got to say that uh, that's one thing that seems to be not as good in Fusion 360 as it was in Inventor. Inventor had some really nice tools for uh, popping the screws in and for putting nuts on them. And I just haven't, you know, it may be in Fusion 360 and I haven't found it yet, but I knew where it was in Inventor. Anyway, there we go. You've got your design. You know how to render it up. And let's save that. Okay. And now what's really cool as a final step, okay, is uh, so there's our excavator control box is uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to close this window for a moment. And you could come in here and you could create a sketch. Actually, I'm going to create this as a new component. So create a new component, and in the new component, I'm going to create a sketch. And you could come in here and oops, make a box. And I'm going to make the box uh, 200 by 250. OK, finish sketch. I'm going to extrude the box, um, oh, uh, say six millimeters. Uh, that's going to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, that's going to form a new body right in there. And so let's come up six millimeters. And now what you can do is you can take your excavator control box right here. You can drag this. And it's a little more complex part. It's, uh, oh, I need to save it with a new name. Save. 
excavator control board. Okay, now bring in your newly designed excavator control box. And we can take that and move it right to there. Uh, maybe bring it in a little bit right up here. Now if you wanted to get really fat, oh, we're going to bring it up so that it's sitting flush on this surface right here. There we go. That's looking really nice. Or did that go back into the surface right there? That went back in. There we go. That's sitting on the surface right there. So you can build an excavator control box. And we can say OK. So we've got that in here. Uh, now we can come in here and let's just check uh, bodies. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, board that we just made. Okay, and that's underneath there. Let's take this body right here that we just made, that part right there, and we are, oh, we have to make it, uh, create a component from that body, and we are going to take uh, the board that we just made, component 2-1 right there, we are going to ground that, there's ground right up at the top, and now we should be able to come in here and, oh, undo. I didn't joint that together. Okay. So let's uh, come up here, turn this on, activate component, and uh, we are going to create a joint. And we're going to pick that side right there. And we're going to put it onto that surface right there. And we're going to move that back over to there so that everything stays put together. Click OK. And now we should be able to take this and move that up and down. That's looking really nice. And now we should be able to take the excavator control box. And we should be able to come in here, do our move copy, create a copy, and drag it over this way and say OK. And now we should be able to do our move copy, create a copy, and move it over this way. And now we have, OK, we'd have to go through and joint those pieces together as well. But now, once we get that all joined together, we have uh, control box where we can have our three syringes for our excavator all nicely controlled by the operator right over here. Alrighty, um, that was last little bit's a little bit fancier than we need but just so you can see where we're going is that you can go through and you can model fairly complex structures and have them come out uh, looking fairly nice and in fact if you want to get uh, kind of fancy on here uh, we can say, uh, let's add some material to that, physical material. Uh, let's make it out of wood. And do they have plywood? Plywood finished. Make it into some finished plywood right there. And let's close that. And what happens if we take that to our render? And let's just do a quick little in canvas render. I should have put the joint in there. It's not looking very fancy, but uh, there you go. It's almost like we're uh, starting to figure some things out on this. Okay, for right now, I'm going to call that a day. And uh, I hope you're having a good time rendering the control box for your excavator. Maybe you'll have some innovative ideas about how you want to shape these things or make them a little bit better, but uh, that's the basics.